I want to wish a happy birthday to our beloved security guard and friend, more friend than security guard for sure, Guillermo. Happy birthday, Guillermo. Hey, Guillermo. Thank you, yeah. You turned how many years old yesterday? 49. 49. And next year, I've been thinking about it, for the next year, for the big one, I think we should go on a trip together, just the two of us, you know? Wow. Maybe to Venice or something? We can get one of those gondolas? Be Be Benny's, uh... Italy or no, California? No, Benny's Italy, that's Italy. right. No. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea. You know what would be fun? Yeah. All right. Think about where you want to go. Okay. We have a football pool here at our office for the Super Bowl, and we have the squares, and I noticed one particular square signed Guillermo R. And, and now, I know there are other Guillermos in the world, but why the R? You, what is this, The Bachelorette or something? Where you, My last is, name. Is there another Guillermo I don't know about? No. I know it's your last name. Not many people know this. Guillermo's last name is Rock and Roll. It's Guillermo Rock and Roll. Yeah. Right? Happy birthday, Guillermo. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Keep rocking and keep rolling. In Washington today, the President's lawyers wrapped up their opening arguments early. They only used half the time they were allotted today. I guess there's only so many times you can lie in a row. But this, <laughs> the president has assembled quite a legal team, including Alan Dershowitz, who represented OJ, and Kenneth Starr, who got Bill Clinton impeached. This guy, Kenneth Starr, first of all, he shows up dressed like the bad guy <laughs> in the movie who wants to kill the friendly alien the kids found in the woods. So yesterday, Starr told the senators, he said, like war, impeachment is hell. And yes, and like war, Donald Trump is doing everything he can to get out of it. <laughs> One of Trump's other lawyers, his main lawyer, this character, Jay Sekulow, he put it all on the table today. He checked off every wacky 8chan conspiracy theory there is. The Bidens, Strzok and Page, Bruce Orr, the FISA warrants, Mueller. He even claimed Trump made peace in the Middle East. The only thing he didn't mention was Hillary's pedophile pizza parlor, but he put on <laughs> quite a show. He seems to be a terrible lawyer, but in fairness to Jay Sekulow, he is a terrible musician, too. I want you to give it up for the Jay Sekulow band. Yeah, that's the Jay Sekulow band. <laughs> it's a good band. Maybe you recognize that band from every erectile dysfunction ad. <laughs> This is a real band. They have a Facebook page and music videos. They even have original songs, like this one, titled Undemocratic. Thank you, three dorks down. So, anyway, during this trial, Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell has been a major presence taking charge of what perhaps is his most important duty as majority leader. I suggest we go ahead, get through the debate, and vote before we take a 30-minute recess for dinner. Mr. Chief Justice, I think we're looking at a 45-minute break for dinner. We'll now take a 30-minute break for dinner. We'll accommodate a 30-minute recess for dinner. Mr. Chief Justice, we'll take a 30-minute break for dinner. At 6 o'clock, uh, a break for dinner. What I was going to suggest was a break for dinner at, at 6.30 for about 30 minutes. that work? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sit down, please. That's right. Break, um... <laughs> break, break for dinner is code for I have a prostate the size of a watermelon. <laughs> now that the opening arguments are over, we move to the Q&A portion of the trial. And on Friday, the main event, as the Senate will, uh, is expected to vote on whether or not to allow witnesses, that answer was a probable not until the contents of a book written by Trump's former national security advisor, John Bolton, leaked to the New York Times. This book reportedly claims that the president personally told John Bolton he was holding up military aid to Ukraine in exchange for an announcement into the, into the Bidens. And, of course, investigation of the Bidens, which is, of course, the opposite of what Trump and his lawyers have been claiming. The president and his hench people are now pushing back hard on this. But today, Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, said he believes... Bolton, the book, which is due out in March, is called The Room Where It Happened, that, which I'm not sure why a book about how he lost his virginity has anything <laughs> to do with the impeachment trial, but the book also says Bolton feared the president was doing personal favors for the leaders of China and Turkey, and it was especially weird at Thanksgiving when...
the turkey Trump t tried to pardon was the country instead of the bird. <laughs> The White House is reeling from this. The officials there were said to be blindsided. Why they are blindsided, I don't know. John Bolton, I mean, look at this. Every photo of John Bolton, he's writing a book. This is not... He's constantly writing a book. There are now more books about Trump's incompetence than uh, the Goosebump series, but... Just to recap, John Bolton, the president's own national security advisor, who is known for taking notes like a stressed-out prep school freshman, says he saw... Trump do what he is being accused of doing firsthand. And most of the Republican senators are like, oh, we don't need to talk to him. Let's go home already. But the coalition is cracking. Mitch McConnell told a group of Republican senators today he no longer has the 51 votes he needs to block witnesses. Democrats need four Republicans to join them to, to get witnesses to testify. And they may have one already in this guy. I think it's uh, increasingly likely uh, that other Republicans will uh, will join those of us who think we should hear from John Bolton. I have spoken with others who've uh, 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 pined upon this as well. And I think it's important to uh, be able to hear uh, from John Bolton for us to be able to make an impartial judgment. That's right. The mid is about to hit the tan. And... <laughs> and it's... By the way, who would have ever thought that the most rebellious senator would be Mitt Romney. But here we are. Mitt Romney, he's been on the show. He seems to be a, a decent guy. And Mitt, Senator Romney, I... First, I want to say I applaud you for taking a stand when most of your fellow Republicans in the Senate won't. It's a good first step. But we have many more steps to go. The man who is on trial, because he is the President of the United States, is in the position of being able to decide which evidence gets shared with the jury. The defendant in the trial gets to withhold evidence if he wants to. And that obviously is insane. But you, Senator Romney, are not insane. You are a religious man. You're a family man who seems like he would like to do the right thing. And the right thing is to insist on having a fair trial with witnesses and evidence. But we can't have that without you. The future of our democracy is in your soft, creamy hands. OK? <laughs> now, I know you want to do this. I know it. I know you don't like Donald Trump. And I know you have principles. In fact, you look like a principal of a high school. <laughs> the president deserves a fair trial, and all we want is for you to give it to him. And if you do, not only are you going to be a hero, I'm going to sweeten the pot a little. We know that other than water, senators have been allowed to drink one thing during the trial. Do you know what that is? Milk. And my guess is that no senator is chugging more of that milk than you. <laughs> And we also know that Mitt Romney loves Twinkies. So much so, his staff got him a Twinkie birthday cake, which he then weirdly put out candle by candle. But forget about that. Blow out the candles however you like, Senator Romney. This is my promise to you. If tomorrow you go to work, you march those pleated dockers into the Senate chamber and talk some old-fashioned common sense into just a few of your fellow Republican senators. If you can do that, I'm going to send you a gift. I'm going to send you two gifts. I'm going to send you, number one, your own milk cow, and number two, all the delicious Twinkies you can eat. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and look at that beautiful milk. Isn't that... Oh, my God. 2% just how you like. So... So go ahead, have a cow, be the hero you were meant to be. Don't just do this for yourself. Do it for your grandchildren, all 3,000 of them. And because no grassroots movement is complete without a hashtag, I am encouraging all Americans, including this cow, <laughs> who wants Senator Romney to demand a fair trial with witnesses like every other fair trial, post about this with the hashtag, Mitt or get off the pot. All right? Now, Twinkie the Kid, ride this cow, which is now becoming, which I am now becoming threatened by. Ride this cow to Washington and fill Mitt Romney with cream. Thank you. And there they go. <laughs> oh, look, looks like we have a full tank, too. Hey, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season in a fun way. Buy my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and drew it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. Or watch another gaming video and don't help kids. It's up to you.